Dark comedies are a tricky thing to pull off. I have found that they are either really good or really bad. There is very few at all that fall in between. If I was a movie maker, I would steer clear of this genre as it has ended directors' career faster than one-hit wonders. Only directors that think of themselves as edgy or want to make a name for themselves, but for me, the risk doesn't fit the reward. But I accept that challenge. But some find it to be a well-served endeavor. But to be fair, if you hit gold, I love gold. And actually pull it off, Oscars and money plus the fame will carry your career for a minimum of 10 years, long enough to make some serious change. But with the rise of streaming and the streaming wars, networks are more likely to greenlight these types of cinematic gambles in a hope to grab attention and that coveted watch time. But for every Fargo we get, seems we get 100 American Psychos too. So future directors, take that as a warning. Now, the movie that I am reviewing isn't clear that it's a dark comedy, but for two-thirds of the movie, it plays as a dark comedy. Now, that might be due to the two male starring cast in Jesse Plemons and Marshall from How I Met Your Mother, or maybe the script was designed to show Marshall as a bumbling idiot that was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and has to improvise to get out of sticky situations. Honestly, Marshall is the only reason I clicked on this movie on Netflix. Well, that and the runtime of one hour and 30 minutes, so not a huge commitment. What was this cinematic masterpiece? Windfall. The plot is fairly simple. We meet up with Marshall in an orange or citrus farm where he seems to be the owner until we see him toss a glass into the field and see him start rummaging through the estate stealing jewelry and money when the owners of the home come back and Marshall gets caught. And in a panic, he decides to hold a couple hostage played by the aforementioned Jesse Plemons and the beautiful Lily Collins. Then demands money that Jesse tells Marshall that he has hidden around the house. So after he gets the money, he leaves like he promised the couple because he doesn't really want to hurt them. He really just wanted to feel what it was like to own such a farm and have a taste of the good life. So Marshall goes back to his car and he feels like he got away with it when he sees a camera that is recording the whole thing directed right into his car. So Marshall has to go back and get the video. But when he gets back to the farm, he finds that the couple has escaped. So a comical chase happens and Marshall manages to round up the couple. So the couple feels bad for Marshall and see that he is frustrated and nervous. So they offer to give him a half a million dollars to disappear since he feels that his face is on camera and the police will be looking for him. So they agree to give him the money, but the money won't be there until the next day. So the trio must manage a night and another day together, so the comical antics begin. The movie makes us believe that Marshall and Lily are developing some sort of attachment while Jesse is abrasive and ego-driven and comes off a bit of a dick. So Lily and Marshall, <laughs> Lily and Marshall, if you don't get that, well, we can't be friends. Anyways, they seem to be getting to know each other when you start thinking, oh wow, she likes Marshall and maybe they will develop a relationship as she reveals she is only with Jesse because he is rich and will have a better life with him. And Jesse overhears this while he is pretending to sleep. So the next day comes when a gardener comes by the ranch to thank the couple for letting him work because he saw the car in the driveway. Now, there is no way for the gardener to see this as we see at the end of the movie that there's a gate. So that means that the gardener will have to be peeping through the gate to know that they were home. But more on that in a bit. 
So the gardener wants to add a palm tree in the middle of the yard and needs Jesse to sign off on the project. Here, Jesse writes call 911 on the note instead of the signature. So the gardener sees this and rushes towards his truck, but Marshall manages to intercept him and now has him hostage also adding to the difficulty. This is when the comedy turns dark. So Jesse is fed up and doesn't believe Marshall is serious and won't hurt anyone. So he challenges Marshall on his motives during the verbal altercation. The movie makes it obvious that the gardener is afraid and is going to run when he gets a chance. So as Jesse is challenging Marshall, Marshall fires a gunshot at the wall and to show Jesse he is serious. This causes the gardener to run in fear and crash into a glass door where he is impaled by a broken glass on the door and bleeds out to death. So now murder is on the menu. Lily calms Marshall and tells him it was an accident and for him not to kill them to cover up the death of the gardener. And it seems to work. So finally, the money gets there and Marshall sends Lily to go pick up the money and you feel like she is going to run away, but she doesn't and brings the money back to Marshall. So Marshall has his money, but before he leaves, he goes back and has one more confrontation with Jesse to let him know that he will always be alone forever. Because the day before, Lily had birth control and this hurt Jesse because he wants a family with, with Lily. So Marshall grabs the bag of money and is walking out of the home when Lily gets free and grabs a statue and hits Marshall in the head three times, killing him. So Jesse is happy that Lily killed Marshall, but then we see Lily point the gun towards Jesse, killing him also. Then... Lily frames Marshall as the killer when she wipes off her fingerprints and places the gun on Marshall's hand. So now she is free and gets to keep all those millions of her now dead husband and roll credits. This movie is a good example of a middle of the road dark comedy that had a good premise but badly executed and tries to pay it off with its twist ending. But it feels lazy and doesn't earn that ending at all and feels out of place. So many plot devices to move the story along and add tension or drama where it feels forced. This movie also started off very indie and Quentin Tarantino with a soundtrack that if you were in a movie theater, you would end up deaf. I damn near took the movie off when the soundtrack started in the beginning of the movie. So fucking loud. Speaking of the soundtrack, that shit was so annoying and off-putting. It's probably the worst part of this film. With the talent that they had, to try and make this film feel like an indie project was a bad approach. This movie could have benefited with a better script and 15 minutes longer to flesh out the ideas better and not have so many plot devices take you out of the movie. Good acting with bad pacing that thankfully it's only an hour and 30 minutes. And that is its saving grace. Would I recommend it? Sure for a date movie or a date night or just for movie goers, yes. But for me, this movie gets a C- rating, but those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments, and like always, that's a wrap.